Today, we partner with the Philadelphia Museum of Art to look at two paintings. One by Henri Matisse from Philadelphia's collection and a painting by K.G. Subramanian from MAP's collection. Both works, although stylistically different, depict a common scene, a seated woman in an interior setting. Join us as we attempt to unpack this iconography featured in artworks stretching across styles and mediums. The man behind this painting, K.G. Subramanian, was a seminal figure in the landscape of modern Indian art. He worked across a variety of mediums, including terracotta murals, oil paintings, pottery, and sculpture. Alongside his artistic practice, he was also a celebrated writer, scholar, teacher, and art historian. Henri Matisse made many innovations in the areas of painting, drawing, printmaking, sculpture, and the illustrated book. This painting, entitled Breakfast, was made in 1920. It marks a transitional moment in Matisse's career. Not long before, he had relocated from Paris to Nice on France's Mediterranean coast. The picture was painted in a room where Matisse lived and worked in an establishment called the Hôtel de la Méditerranée, situated on the city's seafront promenade. On the other hand, Subramanian's work is not set within a specific geographical location. This work, titled Woman in the Blue Room, was painted in 1981, a time when he was experimenting with the reverse glass painting technique. He was particularly interested in the kitsch elements that were typical to these paintings. The vivacity of colors, the employment of bright pinks and light blue, which we also see in this work. The imagery of a seated woman in an interior setting is perhaps something that he encountered during his travels in Europe. Subramanian likely had exposure to the works of Matisse, and his stylistic idiom drew upon a wide range of influences, from the works of Picasso, Kali Ghatpats, and even Japanese woodcuts. Standing at the right edge of the composition, we see a patterned floor-to-ceiling window curtain. To the left is a table with a decorative skirt in white. On the table are two pots with flowers and an oval mirror framed in gold. Above, half cut off by the top of the composition, is a head and shoulders drawing of a woman, which could be a double for the real woman seated in the yellow chair in the middle ground. Seated in this chair, is a hired artist model named Antoinette Arnoud. In front of her is a second table with a red and white striped tablecloth. And on that table in the foreground is a still life that gives the picture its title. A tray with a cup and saucer, a pot perhaps for tea, and a plate with lemons. Compositionally, we see some parallels between both works. Both works feature a seated woman with their heads resting on their hands amidst a backdrop that includes flowers and vases. In Subramanian's painting, the female figure is draped in a white sari with hints of cleavage, adding a sensual quality to the work. The rendering of her body and flesh also shows some affinity to the Kaligat style of painting. During the Industrial Age, Women's bodies were often linked to interiority. Women were seen as extensions of the interior, sometimes even blending into the decor. Scholarship suggests that the presence of flowers and vases in such settings were also markers of fecundity. Yet, Subramanian's take on this common iconography is often marked by a playful, almost subversive quality, and this recurs in his other works as well. Similarly, with breakfast, we see the construction of interiority in Matisse's painting. His way of rendering the space in this picture as a light fell box tells us something important about the direction of his work in 1920. Having gone through a period of very demanding and experimental painting, Matisse was now interested in turning towards refinement and sensuality. He was interested in painting spaces like the one in this picture as little pictorial worlds where he could explore the pleasures of pictorial depth, richness of detail, and the corporeality of the succession of female models 
whom he employed in daily painting sessions. The body of Antoinette Arnoux introduces an element of sensuality, but Matisse's conceit was to align her allure with the decorative patterns of everything else in the picture to create a unified effect across the surface of the canvas. Like Matisse, Subramanian too was interested in the construction of pictorial space. He began experimenting with the grid while in New York when he pieced together canvases, the result of a small studio space. Traces of the grid and at times a window-like setup continued within his paintings and terracotta works. The spatial configuration visualized in this painting is striking. The picture plane is effectively divided into three through the use of perpendicular lines as well as the flattening of volume. Subramanian's approach to space is structured and partitioned. The seated woman occupies the upper portion of the work while the lower portion comprises an arrangement of flowers and bowls, akin to a still life. In conclusion, it's worth noting that here and in many other pictures of the period, Matisse makes a strong connection between the setting of the bedroom or boudoir, the figure of the model, and the psychology of absorption underscored in this picture by the theme of reading. Antoinette Arnoux looks up from her book, twists in her chair, and is caught in a moment of thought that could be melancholy or simply reverie. This disinterest is echoed in Subramanian's painting as well, and the construction of the interiors in both the works further accentuate their solitude. Locating these themes and motifs across geographical boundaries reflect how common iconographic constructions have been interpreted and visualized in the works of established artists across cultures.